So in this video, we're going to be showing you uh, a, a video demonstration of the two downloads that we provided for you today. Because um, a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with some of the various uh, options and features and changing stone sizes and adding text and so forth. So I thought I'd give you two downloads today and then really give you a detailed explanation of how to use them. So the first thing we're going to do is import the EPS file. So I'm going to be using Corel Draw. I'm using uh, version X5 here. So let's go ahead and import this. And this process is probably going to be very similar to just about any uh, software that you may be using out there. So let's go ahead and import our file. So this is an EPS file. So there's our file. So the first thing that I would do is, uh, number one, when we import an EPS file here into CorelDRAW, right now everything's grouped together. So the first things first, let's go ahead and right click and choose ungroup all. So now everything is one individual stone. Now, I'm going to tell you, really, for rhinestone design, you want to have some type of CorelDRAW macro because it is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Most of your other rhinestone software, such as StoneCut Pro by Digital Art Solutions, uh, WinPC Sign 2012, uh, the Oobling software, which you can check out at Synergy17.com, most of your other rhinestone software is going to have some type of object replacer function. And that's what we're going to talk about here, but I'm going to be using our EasyStone macro for that process. Now, if you have R stones or draw stone macro, or uh, there's a couple other op options out there for CorelDRAW, um, most of those softwares have some type of similar feature. So the first thing that we need to do is think about the actual stone size for our template. So I'm going to come in here to CorelDRAW and switch over to millimeters and just select a stone. And we can see that this particular stone is 4.15 millimeters. And that's not how big uh, that I would typically cut a 10SS stone. I usually cut with 3.2 circles. So the first thing we're going to do is just select the entire design and scale it down a bit. You know, the more you do this, the more you know about how much to scale and look at the stone size again. Now it's 3.7, so we know we're getting closer, and we're not looking to get exact. We're just looking to get roughly in the ballpark. Okay, so now we're at 3.3. Well, that's better in the ballpark. I would usually err on the side of being a little bit uh, bigger than our target size um, when we're doing this rough scale. Okay, so in this case, we are at 3.3, so I'm just going to go just a bit smaller take another look and we're at 3.195 okay that's pretty good but remember I said it's better to air just a bit uh, on the on the larger size if you look at the the spacing between these stones it's pretty tight so I'm just gonna pull it out just a pinch and now look at it it's a little bit more than 3.2 and that's fine it's gonna be pretty darn close all right so that is kind of step one so now let's go ahead and open up easy stone because this is definitely going to make the process much easier if we're using some type of macro. So all we have to do is uh, type in the size of stone that we want to use, which in my case I want to use 3.2 size. And I'm going to select all of the stones that I want to change to that size. So I just selected the first group, and then I hold down my shift key and select the second group. So now all those stones are of, the, of uh, selected. And so what I want to do here is I'm going to be uh, doing those in crystal. So I'll go ahead and do the crystal. And I like to come over here to our stone tab and we'll choose the rename and fill option. That changes those all to crystal. Now it doesn't change the size. It just changes. It just tells CorelDRAW these are all crystal stones. Now to actually change the size, that's where the resize replace comes in. And now when we select one of those stones, you can see it's exactly 3.2 millimeters. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is the basketball. Now I already know this because I, I deliberately made this file this way um, just to force you to learn a little bit about more about your rhinestone program if you're not using CorelDRAW. These stones are not really sized properly for a either a 10SS or in this case this design these stones were made for a 6SS stone. And typically, when I cut these stones, I typically would cut these uh, usually at 2.3, okay? 
So we need these stones to be 2.3, and if we select one right now, it is 1.8. 1. 1. So we need this to be bigger. And again, we're just looking to get it in the ballpark. So let's scale it, look at one, and it's two. So we're close. Do a little bit more scaling. Look at it again, 2.2, we're getting closer. And just a touch more scaling. And of course, once we get this set up, because everyone cuts their whole size just a little bit different. There we go, we're just a pinch on the tall side, uh, a little over 2.3. So now I can select all those stones. First thing I want to do is let's go ahead and give those a color. So we'll choose orange, and we'll go ahead and uh, choose the uh, rename and fill. And that changes those to all orange stones. And then we'll select the whole lot, and then we'll do the resize, replace, and it will resize them to 2.3. And we can select one stone, and you can see it is exactly 2.3. So now we're going to go ahead and select our basketball. We're going to go ahead and group all of those stones together. And same thing with our letter M over here on the left and the letter M over here on the right. Control G, by the way, is the keyboard shortcut for that. Now, the spacing between the M and the basketball, we want that to be pretty uh, accurate. So we're just going to get it close. And once we're happy with how close it is, we can select all three elements. Remember, they're all grouped together. And if we do the Shift P function, P as in Paul, that will evenly space the selected objects going horizontally. And now we know that the spacing on each side of the basketball for the letter M is spot on perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do is line them up uh, horizontal centers, and that would be selecting all three objects and hitting the letter E for Edward on the keyboard. And now everything is lined up perfectly, and our design, is really at this point, is really ready to be sent to the cutter. So we're going to go ahead, but we'll go ahead and uh, we will ungroup all, and we'll do that for all of our groups. Okay, so now we've ungrouped all those objects, and we could send this, save this out as an EPS file, and we could go ahead and send this to the cutter for cutting because it's all set up. Now, the next part of the puzzle is working with our rhinestone text, and that we'll cover in our next video.